Hello there guys, it's me again Unstable Voltage with another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft. Today we're going to be taking a look at another machine from the Thermal Expansion. And the machine I want to build today is this, the Induction Smelter. Now I agree it does work in much the same way as a furnace, but it's specifically designed for turning ores and dusts into metal bars. It also produces a unique byproduct in the form of slag, and it gives us an additional method to increase our metal yield. Now it's quite an easy machine to build, so let's pop on over to the workshop and put one together. Okay guys, so we're back in the workshop. Now what you are going to need is obviously a crafting table and a furnace, but you're also going to need to make sure you have a pulverizer which we built a couple of episodes ago. And the reason for that is part of the recipe to make the induction smelter is invar ingots. Now to make an invar ingot, you need pulverized iron and pulverized ferrous metal, both of which you actually get from putting iron ore into the pulverizer. Then it's just a matter of going up to a crafting table, putting in two pulverized iron and a pulverized ferrous metal and that will give you three invar dust. All you then need to do is pop your invar dust in your furnace and it will smelt them down into invar ingots for you. And you're going to need to have two of those. So, at the crafting table, a good old fashioned bucket in the top slot, a machine frame in the middle, Another redstone reception coil at the bottom, so quite familiar so far for the rest of the thermal expansion recipes. Two copper ingots in the bottom two corners, and the two invar ingots go either side on the middle. And there you go, we have our induction smelter. Okay, as always, I'll just pop one down in the middle of the floor to show you, so you'll recognise... As with the rest of the thermal expansion mods, you have all of these different coloured inputs and outputs around the side. If we open the interface, you can see we have two inputs and we have two outputs. And again, it uses build craft power because this runs from the, uh, it's the thermal expansion mod. And again, we can adjust the configuration of the inputs and the outputs. So as you can see, the default configuration, the left hand side is the primary input. The back is the secondary input, the right hand side is the primary output, and the top and bottom is the secondary output. But for now, let's pick it up. Again, you're going to need your crescent hammer because it is a thermal expansion machine, and right clicking changes the direction, crouch and right clicking will destroy the block. So I'm going to go and pop it down over here so that it is on top of our conductive pipe to our engines below and turn on the power. Now let's have a look and see what we can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some iron dust. You can see we're getting power. Now if you place just one dust in, it won't do anything. If I place two dusts in, it won't do anything. In order to smelt anything in the induction smelter, you need to have sand in the secondary input. So I'm gonna pop a block of sand in there. Now again, one dust won't do anything, two dusts will. So you always need to have dusts in twos for this to work. So as you can see, one block of sand and two iron dust gives me two iron ingots. Now it also gives me a byproduct in the form of slag. So let's put some more dust in there. So there's another two and another two. Let's just go and throw the whole stack in because this smelts very quickly. Now the good thing is smelting dust uses relatively little power. So it will smelt quite fast. So as you can see, we're getting uh, ingots at the rate of one ingot per one dust and we are getting slag at a relatively reasonable rate. So let us, well, let's let the stack finish. We may as well. We're nearly there anyway. And see what we get. So obviously 64 iron dust gave us 64 iron ingots and also gave us eight slag. Now what we can do, let me just go over to a chest and grab some more iron dust. Okay, before I do anything else, actually, I'm going to pop over to our furnace and I'm going to take the slag, which we just got from the induction smelter, and I'm going to put it in the furnace and let that cook. And while that's doing that, we will go back to the induction smelter. So what I'm going to do here, again, 
sand in the secondary slot and this time instead of putting in iron dust I'm going to put in iron ore. Now iron ore actually requires um, more, well any ore requires more power to smelt than dust requires. So this isn't the most efficient way of using the induction smelter, but if you smelt ores instead of dust, you have a 20% chance of getting a very specific secondary byproduct. And hopefully, somewhere in this stack, we will get some. One good thing about the induction smelter is you don't have to macerate or pulverize the ore first to double the yield. As you can see, one iron ore actually gives us two iron ingots. Okay, and there you can see it didn't feel like a 20% chance, but what we actually have is some rich slag. Now hopefully we'll get a little bit more of that so I can demonstrate what that's used for. So I'll let this process carry on. But as I was saying before, normally you'd take one metal ore and pulverise it or macerate it to get two dusts, and those two dusts would then give you two bars. You can completely skip that process out by putting the ore directly into the smelter, but it will use more power. Okay, well it's taken a while to smelt all this, I think it's still going, yeah it is. So far I've managed to get 9 rich slag from that entire stack of iron. I was hoping for a little bit more, but not to worry, let's just let it finish just in case. Okay, so I've got that stack smelted up, and out of the whole stack of iron ore, I only managed to get 10 rich slag. So I think Greg Tech have actually altered the ratio a little bit more, it seems more like about... 5 or 10% chance of actually getting rich slag as opposed to a 20% chance. Anyway, let me show you the reason for having the rich slag. Let's put some sand back in the secondary input. If we take one iron ore and one block of sand, we get two ingots. Again, one block of iron ore, one block of sand, two ingots just as we'd expect but if we take out the sand and put in some rich slag and oops can't work minecraft anymore one block of iron ore we now get three ingots and we also have a chance for getting slag so by putting the rich slag back in the secondary input you actually increase the yield for the ore now, in older versions of Greg Tech, this used to work with um, dusts and pulverized items as well. Now, this gave you a bit of an advantage because you could put, for example, two iron dust with a rich slag and get three iron ingots. You could then pulverize those iron ingots back into dust and put two dust back in and use another rich slag and get three more iron ingots, pulverize two and go round and round and round in a circle and you could exponentially increase how many um, bars you had providing you had enough rich slag. And this was perfect for the harder to come by materials such as gold because you could get something that was really easy to farm like lead, uh, sorry, like um, iron or tin or copper you could um, smell loads of it with sand to get lots and lots of rich slag and then all you needed were two piles of gold dust and you could keep feeding it through the smelter and back through the pulverizer with rich slag and just make loads and loads of gold bars. Unfortunately, it looks like recently that has been removed from Greg Tech. Okay, so there is one other interesting thing you can do with the induction smelter, and that involves pulverized obsidian. Obviously, you just put obsidian in a pulverizer to get that. You're also going to need either lead dust or lead ingots in the secondary input. We'll put the pulverized obsidian in the primary input. And there you are, we have hardened glass. So it's a very good way to get that. Obsidian dust and either lead dust or lead ingots, well sorry, uh, pulverized obsidian and either pulverized lead or lead ingots will give us hardened glass. So there you go, that's the induction smelter. Now let's just stop that process because there's one more thing I wanted to show you. If you remember a little while ago we took our normal slag and popped that in our furnace and what we now have is rock wool. And let's actually put that here. So we can put the rock wool down. Now, rock wool pretty much looks the same as normal wool does, um, but as you can see, it has a slightly darker pattern around the edges, at least it does in this texture pack. And the main advantage of rock wool is it's a little bit harder to destroy than normal wool. So, as you can see, 
It's, it's mo mostly used for construction and decoration because it's a little bit more hardy. But um, you can do some very nice things with this um, for dyeing. So let me just go and grab some dye and I can show you what I am talking about. So I've already mentioned why rock wool is better to use as a crafting material, but it's also much more efficient to dye. So let's take something for example like normal wool. If I put normal wool in the crafting table and want to dye it blue for example, so let's put some indigo dye next to it, I now have blue wool. It's cost me one wool and one dye to make one blue wool. If I then decide to change my mind and want to make it a different colour such as lime green for example, and it's not going to allow me to do that. You need to bleach wool before you can dye it to a different colour. So let's first of all try our rock wool. Well, as you can see I've placed our rock wool next to the dye and nothing's happening. And the reason for that is you actually need to have eight rock wool. Now this is actually good because it means one dye will give you eight coloured wool instead of one. So there we go, we now have our eight coloured wool. Now another advantage of this is we can change that wool to a different colour without having to take the step of bleaching in between. So you get a couple of interesting byproducts from our induction smelter. We have the ability to make hardened glass, we have the ability to increase the yield of um, ingots that we get from it using the rich slag, and we also get normal slag as a byproduct which we can use to make our rock wool. So there you go, the induction smelter. So guys, thanks once again for watching. Now you have another machine that you can add to your facilities and another way to make your mining more profitable. And I hope as always you found this video informative and entertaining. And if you have, please as usual, like, share and subscribe because it really helps myself and the channel out. And if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see in future videos, if there's a particular machine or item or mod that you'd like to see me build and demonstrate, by all means either send me a message or leave it in the comments below. So until then, I've been Unstable Voltage and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye for now.